All right, Bruce. Here's the Husky boys with another cliche YouTube joke. <laughs> Bruce is not happy. What you what you got in your bag, Bruce? A belt. <laughs> Deadlift shoes. Squat shoes. shoes. What I got in mine? Belt. Deadlift and squat shoes. shoes. Squat shoes. And that's it. Once again. Chalk. <laughs> that was your cliche YouTube video from the Husky Boys. How it actually should be instead of like a 30 minute. <laughs> <laughs> Short, simple, and sweet. Let's go lift some heavy ass weight. All right, go ahead. All right. Here's a trick for how to set up your squat competition. They're going to ask you to set the rack at a certain height. So the trick to set up at its appropriate height is to take the bar. So you can bring it up to a little bit below the middle of your chest or at the middle of your chest, you're good. Once you start getting below the nipple, it's way too low. You start getting towards your clavicle, it's way too high. Right? Right? In between the middle of your chest and the top of your nipple, perfect. Well, another on, Husky Boy life on. lesson moment. Life lesson, you life lesson. Else. <laughs> you won't hear that on Max Trulli's channel. Or Nick Wright's. Or Nick Wright's. <laughs> Anybody's. We tell y'all the real shit, the shit y'all need to know. This is this is what happens when you lift 600. We cannot have uh, a good meat prep. So, so what happens? So what happens? We, this we, shit. We, we cannot can, have a good prep. It, it's impossible. It's impossible. Luckily, we have a backup belt we for have this. A backup belt. All right. So I guess I'm gonna go get that. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> this was for Nick Wright. Was never deep. Who has never deep squatted over 405? Or did he ever get to 405? <laughs> this is what happens when you break your belt in the gym. You say fuck it, you still do your set. <laughs> Alright. Number one tip. Another Husky Boy lesson. Another Husky Boy lesson. If your shit is hurting you in the gym, don't do it. Exactly. Bruce, why is your stance so damn narrow? My stance is so narrow because when I do a wide stance, I always hurt my knee. Every single time. <laughs> my knees start hurt all the time. I brought my stance in, I completely forgot I even had knee pain. And then the one time you widened it out. The one time I widened it, you I hurt your knee myself. Up, yeah. <laughs> That's when I hurt myself front squatting that one day. You gotta know your body, y'all. Know your body, do what works for you. Don't listen to anybody else. I am so cold that you might have to thaw me out. That money be calling now, I won't stop balling out. I am a mess like Jabari now. See niggas was sleeping on me, but I just woke them up and they saying they sorry now. I'm a dope stacking, dope rapping, no lacking. Raw and uncut, tell you what's up. You lifting with the Husky Boy Bending some bars, y'all know what it is. Tell me what we're doing today, Bruce. Another three day lift. Again, we did three sets of openers on every single competition lift, competition style, competition commands, <laughs> competition gear, competition everything, competition yo mama, competition yo daddy. <laughs> and so for the most part, our openers went well. Only problem I had was my squats. You know, my first squat, it looked all right. But then that second and third got kind of ugly, especially by the third one. But like I said, that's something I'm going to start working on after competition. It's just fixing up that form, making it clean. I just got a couple muscle imbalances that I got to fix. What about you, Bruce? How'd your openers go? I couldn't use a belt because... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, My belt randomly broke. Once again, somebody has put a hex on Someone the Husky Someone is boys. trying to make sure that the Husky boys don't do anything in competition. <laughs> we still going to set records, right? Or you, you're going to set records, right? It don't matter. Sure, don't sure. Matter. Of, of course, of anyway, course. Anyway, let's get to the to topic of the video. So today's video... We want it because we were seeing, we saw some stuff that made us a little bit upset, and we want to try to help y'all out for the people that just don't know that they're like hurting themselves more than helping themselves. For let, let's all right, let's just, I'm gonna go ahead and tell, tell you side of this video. 
beginner advice. So for for we hate what we hate to see is and we know that a lot of people just don't know what they're doing. But for a beginner to go on YouTube and just start doing uh, a, a routine lifting style that everybody else is doing. Now, a lot of people are doing the conjugate method right now, and that's fine, but we feel like the conjugate method is really more geared for people that have started to hit uh, plateaus or who have been, really who have just been lifting longer. Intermediate. Yeah, it's more of an intermediate routine. That's The conjugate method is not normal because you realize you have to max out every single time you go to the gym, and then after that, do well, like ten. I don't know if you have to max out every single time, but you do have a, a lot, lot of max effort days. And then you have to, then you have to go and do like ten sets of two and stuff like that. That's not really a normal routine. A more normal routine is something that's going to require you to do a lot. And something, and something you need to do as a beginner is have a lot of, of volume. You need a lot of high reps. You need something that's going to force your body to grow and to get stronger. And plus, you need those high reps to work on your uh, form. You know, if you're a beginner, form is everything. It's going to take you, unless you're just, unless you're like our friend Nick, which I, I don't think I'll ever met Nick, but if y'all, unless y'all like Nick. I think he was in one video. Nick, <laughs> Nick we, tell, one video. we tell stories all the time because Nick's like a legend. This dude, according to Bruce, would just come in the gym and he would see, so he saw Bruce deep squat. So Nick was like, okay. I'm a deep squat too, and just does it like nobody. <laughs> nobody can do that we know of can do what Nick does. But it's like if you can, that's fine. But for the most part, it's gonna take you a couple years to uh, fix imbalances, to fix form, and all those things. So really, you you need to be working on things that are gonna force your body. You know, if you're doing sets of ten or eight, your body isn't gonna be able to do like 400 pounds for eight reps if you have bad form. It's gonna force you to learn to use good form or snap your shit. If, you, if you're doing sets of 10 or 8, your body is also going to be forced to grow. Like, your body's going to be like, shit. Well, if he's going to be pushing all these damn reps, I need to get stronger. I need to get Definitely. If you're a beginner, you should definitely shouldn't be. I mean, every, because, everybody because, knows that. So, there is there is some hypertrophy, of course. And uh, when, you're do, when you're doing, when you're lifting weight against, or when you're, uh, when you're doing a weighted movement, of course, there's some hypertrophy. No matter what, which, as long as you have some sort of volume. Of course, if you do one set of one, there's like, I don't know what the actual percentage of hypertrophy to work to whatever it is. But if you're doing some sets, you have some volume in it. Of course, there's always going to be some hypertrophy. Now, if you're a be very, 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 if you're a beginner, which is like like, like year, I see, year, what was it like a year within and a half? Within the or first less? year, yeah, yeah, within the first year, first year and a half, I sincerely doubt that you should be doing. You are gonna really grow from truly as much as you should from ten sets to two, and yeah. you should be focused on growing your muscle because there is nothing that there's, you can just cannot argue that muscle moves weight. Yeah, that's exactly. just the, that's just the truth. And you need your so your first year year even if you if if you're lucky your first two years is where you're gonna have the most drastic um, strength growth of strength of, growth of muscle your, of increase your lifetime. everything you can so it's like they say you can get like 25 pounds of muscle growth in one year in your first year yeah so it's like you know you need to really be pushing your body so that you can get you can go ahead and max everything out before it starts to slow down you know you need to be pushing your body so that you can hit 100 pounds a year on, on your total or more before it starts slowing down to 75 pounds 50 pounds 20 10 you know things like that and so, in order to do that, you need to push your body to its limit. It's like, it's like when, let, I'm gonna just use this example. It's like I'm gonna I'm I'm compare it to Floyd Mayweather. So Floyd Mayweather, when he was young, he would push his body to the absolute extreme, and because he was young, his body could recover from it, and he would be okay, and it just made him a better fighter. Now that he's older. He can't just go into the gym and push his body to his limits. He'll end up breaking something or tearing something. He's too old. So what does he have to do? He has to train smarter. You don't really need to worry about training smarter until you start hitting plateaus, until you start, you know. Until, in the Husky Boys personal opinion. Yeah, in, in, in our opinion, until you start slowing down, until you start seeing stuff change. If Like, in, in all honesty, if you're watching your lifts go up and you're doing sets of 10 or 8, don't worry about switching your thing. As long as your lifts are going up, don't worry about switching over to other programs. Because I, I see there's too many people out there 
that'll just jump on the next bandwagon pro- program before they even finish gaining all their strength on one program. First it was Candidos, now it's yeah, Mastetics. Yeah, now it's Mastetics. Not like, saying they're bad programs. Not saying that at all. But we're but saying... But just saying that, like... I feel like I feel like it's not even not even that they're bad programs, just... You, you gotta, not saying they're bad programs. Yeah, you yeah. got you to gotta really do your research on them. If, if you're a beginner, you need to find out what's best for a beginner lifter. Which I believe would be more candidos. Yeah, if you if you're you know, if you're starting to slow down, if you need help with just maybe maybe your bench is plateaued for like six months. Well maybe you need to go do something that has more volume. Or maybe your deadlift has plateaued. Then you might need to do something like a conjugate method. You know, it's just you need to go look at what each method is best for building, you know, who is best for and things like that. You need to really, re- when we say research, you can't just go on YouTube and look at somebody who's already good at lifting and say, okay, they did this, so it's going to make me better. You have to really buckle down and do your shit. You have to look at form. You have to look at what has worked for other people, why it has worked for other people. You have to look at your body type. You have to look at, you know, how you, how, what makes you grow the best because if you don't start studying it early when your shit starts to slow down you're going to be way behind everybody else because you're going to be like well shit i don't know what works for me you know like uh chris jones said uh he was like i cannot grow my triceps any more than they already are but i know that my biceps can grow a lot so i'm gonna i think it was the other way around oh no oh it's the other way around okay. might have been the other but, way but either way he knew what works for him or like i'm i hate i'm using this example but nick wright knows that <laughs> he knows that by doing super heavy weight for small reps, that's what makes his biceps grow the most. But other people may need to do a lot of a lot of low weight, high volume reps in order to grow their biceps. Like it's the same thing with powerlifting. You need to study what works best for you. If you go into the gym, do like three sets of ten, and by the end of the month you gain twenty pounds on your lift. Well, when you start hitting plateaus later on, maybe you need to go back to that system. Or if you know that the one time you tried doing a conjugate method, you had some type of insane increase in your lifts, maybe the next time you plateau, you should go back. You really need to, you really need to, uh, to get that research in, to do your work behind the scenes. But that's basically all we got to say. Hope those tips helped you. Comment, like, and subscribe. Peace out, YouTube. Put in work. Move that dope. Bye, guys.